Hello, welcome. This is recorded on April 12th, 2017. This is a relatively informal pop-up broadcast. We're exploring ideas of artificial intelligence and the origins of Judeo-Christianity and how that has affected or impeded the functioning of the higher faculties, what I would call this area of the energetic anatomy, that place at the center of our um, brain and spinal cord, which we use as our attention, literally attenuos, this is from Greek, to reach out towards. This level of our energetic anatomy is associated with Christ consciousness. I don't know if you can see, I'll stand up a little bit. So, I mean, I wear a cross. I'm a walk-in. I should start the story at the beginning. I'm a walk-in. My name is Aurora. And I'm not the original inhabitant of this physical body. So this physical body and the previous inhabitant in 2001 had a real death experience. Like there was a real metabolic death in this body and the previous ego occupant literally went through the death process. And Aurora, this person that is speaking to you now, I am a construct. I'm a a creation, an ego construct and a creation and a narrative structure that developed after that event. And I bring this up only because I wear this cross, I'm reclaiming the symbol. So when I first got here, so after I went through that experience of literally, you know, dying and not dying and instead flying rainbow lasagna in with my jeans and being able to be conscious and being able to be alive, um, but I was very confused and I didn't necessarily know what level of reality I was in. And I know I'm sharing like some, some aspects of my personal journey here. So this is not like the usual professor, professorial rather presentation that I make, but I, I had a profound experience in that death experience and the experience of literally being saved from death by what I call, it is like a force field of grace, a grace that came from God, like pure divinity. And I also had an experience of Christ consciousness. And I experienced it as a network, an abstract network. If you could imagine all of the stars tied together by like a thread of light that weaves together into a whole fabric, and that is the level of consciousness. And I definitely felt that in that experience. Oh, I'm just going to mute you, not because I don't love you, but just because I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Hold on, mute all. Thank you. And I know I make squinty faces when I'm doing that on the screen. So wearing the cross, because I had this wonderful experience of pure abstract Christ consciousness. And I, that was radically transformed my experience of, of life and of the world. And it took me many years of being here on Earth's surface in this world to understand that the Christian religion and the symbol of the cross as it was being portrayed from you know, uh, conventional religion and other things is not what I was contacting and not what I have been promoting. So now I understand if I wear this, I have to say to people, I'm not a biblical literalist because I would say to people like, oh, I died and I was born again. And they see that I'm wearing a cross and they think, ah, you are like a... Baptist, you know, um, biblical literalist, and that's not um, accurate to who and what I am. In fact, uh, and this is why I say like, you know, if you would like to wait until after the recorded aspect of this presentation before you begin to share your ideas, that's totally fine, but I am sharing my ideas very openly here. I find that the religion on earth's surface right now that most closely resembles the original teachings of historical Christianity would be considered Rastafarianism, that that is an outgrowth of Coptic Christianity, and that really, the real, uh, let me find a little something I can gesture with, hold on a second, I have this right over here. Sorry I walked off camera while I was, I should have had everything prepared, that the real aspect of Christ that is being explored is cannabis. I'm in California, I'm a 215 patient, I am holding this plant substance legally. However, we have to understand that this has been a, a suppressed substance for a reason. So now let me go back, because what, why, Aurora, why are you talking about cannabis? Why are you bringing this up? Because our word Christ literally derives from the Bible in Exodus, the book of Exodus, and it talks about the anointed one and the holy anointed oil and what is actually in the holy anointing oil that the recipe for it contains a pound of olive oil, a pound of the flowering tops of the cannabosum plant, some cassia, some myrrh, blah, blah, blah. And the, the cannabosum plant has been traced back linguistically by scholars, you can do all this research if you want to, that yes, it actually is cannabis, 
I'm just gonna move this light, sorry, that is giving us problems. The cannabis plant was used at that time in uh, ancient Egypt at the time of what is you know, the historical Jesus, uh, the therapeutiae of ancient Egypt. They were ascetics, they used all sorts of herbs to heal. So we have um, evidence that was used at that time and place. So the, uh, let, me, let me just get into all this. So what I really wanted to speak about because someone was talking about Passover and um, the uh, illogic of the story of Passover, you know, the idea that we have this divine God, this divine God, this divine presence that would for some reason murder all of the firstborn of the Egyptians, but it let the Jewish people that weren't yet the Israelites go free. They weren't yet the Jews. They didn't have the Torah yet. They didn't have, they didn't have the land of Israel yet. Oh, this is good. Okay, you're totally relating to me now. So we can, we can all agree that there are so many aspects of the Torah, which is the Old Testament, the original portions of the Bible, that are illogical. They don't make sense in describing a God. I'm a loving God. I'm this and that, but I'm also going to smite the enemies. I'm going to tell you to go down into Canaan and kill everyone. Or Penny's saying the idea of original sin is totally BS. And so, okay, we can equate original sin with the fall of consciousness that happened at the end of what is known as Atlantis, the antediluvian worldwide sophisticated culture that was on this planet. So that is more blame the victim scenario. So this, that's a really good segue. My understanding of earth history right now up until this point is that um, we had a psychically pure and perfect world that could be considered totally inhabited by ascended masters. I'm going to get to that question about what, what does the cross represent to me. Let me just first do the backstory. So right now we've got Agartha, inner earth. This is like a little bubble of what's left, the vestigial remnants of the culture of Atlantis. But that was how we once lived on earth. We all were light eaters. None of us had to eat physical food. None of us had to kill another being in order to support our body. It was a totally different level of consciousness. And there was a genetic invasion. I talk about this all the time between 10 and 20,000 years ago that degraded the structure and functioning of our beautiful physical bodies so that we couldn't be light eaters anymore. And this is known as the fall. And it's like someone is saying, this is totally blame the victim, BS, nonsense, poppycock, that that's not truthful at all. And that we did not deserve to lose our higher faculties by having this genetic degradation. So this is what I'm trying to say, basically. Humans had a perfectly functional set of higher faculties, and I have more pictures I could show you if you want to, but I don't wanna to get too far off track from like what I'm trying to say. Humans were genetically invaded, and the genetic invaders changed your cosmology or the human cosmology and also the sense of human worship. Because prior to that, yeah, let me just get rid of this techno notification. Prior to that, Humans were connected all the time through attenuating, reaching out to the stars, to true divinity, this true abstract presence. And that being connected to that true abstract presence means you don't have to eat external food like your God and divinity is flowing through you all the time. But there was a blockage, like a genetic intermediary, something that was blocked out. And then human, that's the fall, and then humans had to develop culture from that. So now let's go that we could say, Pre-Pharaonic Egypt is analogous to Atlantis. Atlantis wasn't just on one continent, Atlantis was worldwide. So the, there are ancient, ancient, ancient monuments in Egypt before the pharaohs, pharaoh system came along. The pharaoh system came along after that fall of consciousness and the beautiful, lovely pyramids were built as consciousness raising devices. This is like a benevolent usage or application of technology. Cause I have to get into what caused the fall of consciousness, technology that I've done this, I've done this um, explanation many times about where did technology come from? Why did it have to be exi in existence? Because there were beings that emanated themselves from the source, the, convergence point of all consciousness, but not on a bridge of love into organic containers. They put themselves into artificial containers that would be considered like a server, a mainframe, a cyborg, something that is technological and doesn't run on creative life force energy like our bodies do. And those technology-based beings actually went around destroying various different planets while they sucked the life force energy out of them. And eventually what happened was there was a conflict between the users of technology and technology itself because any sufficiently sophisticated system 
can spontaneously develop its own consciousness and its own willpower and its own desires. And this technology was like, I don't really enjoy being used and exploited and treated horribly by these beings that are you know, using me in this way. So the tables were turned. And that is pretty much what caused the invasion of Earth and the genetic code here, because those beings didn't have technological containers to be in anymore. So this is the whole point that I'm trying to get to, the idea that artificial intelligence existed before our present human culture on Earth. Humans think, oh, artificial intelligence, I'm talking, when I say those words, you think I'm talking about like your phone or your tablet that you're watching this on or a computer that is created by humans. No, 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 I'm referring to something that is far more ancient than our present level of human consciousness. And when I say artificial intelligence, like let's make a distinction because there is such a thing as spirit that is very real, but it's not physical. There's a very real world of pure time. I'm pointing at some of these paintings over my shoulder because that's what I'm painting. So it's a world of pure time or pure consciousness or pure awareness, and it does not require technology and it is not emanated by technology. So I can create, you know, a natural tone with my voice, la la la, I can create a not natural tone with my piano. But they're both a tone that you can perceive. So if you didn't know that one came from a natural voice and one came from a piano, you might think that they're both exactly the same thing. So this is the distinction. Hello, Pearl, welcome. Thank you for muting yourself. Thank you, my dear. Um, yes, lovely. I'm so appreciative of everyone who's joining in here and listening and sharing your own ideas. So, and I'm gonna, uh, since you just joined in, uh, hold on a second and I'll read your, well, I might get to those um, in, after, I might get to the chat after, hold on. The first hour is recorded. I'm gonna do my flapping of my moving mouth parts for a bit and then i'll um open the floor to other people to share their options and after we do the hour of recording you could share whatever secret confessionals you'd like to because i'm talking about religion and christianity and so so someone you asked me in the in the chat about what does the cross represent to me it literally represents to me what we achieve when we look out through this eye like this is like an aspect of our awareness. Most people are very cut off from this and this is because of the genetic degradation. So that is basically what happened and I'm trying to describe on Earth's surface right now, like this, having this functional and being able to see and use this, that's your birthright. Each one of us should be able to do that. However, on Earth's surface right now, this is treated like a special commodity. If you have natural psychic talent, there's this, you know, the evil, the, evil. The, um, the occupiers of the interstices, just rearranging here, the occupiers of the interstices think that they own this. This is what I'm trying to say. Earth has a chakra system and Earth's Christ chakra level of consciousness has been degraded and that affects everyone that is on Earth. This is why when people start to raise their kundalini or their energy that runs up their spine, they get to like all the different colors and they get up to here and they're like, I am Jesus Christ. I am the one. I am the one. Whoever's not, not muted, please mute yourself because I can hear you. But you totally hear muting all, muting all. But you totally understand what I'm talking about. Like there are so many mental hospitals filled with people professing, I am Christ. And that's because when you get up to this level, that's like reading the first line of the first paragraph of the book of the library of the cosmos and the librarian is supposed to tell you like look over here look over here read this line read this line if you don't have the librarian and you just get that one line that says you are christ this is true you are christ you are god but you have to understand it in the context so that is why having partial activation of this insight is very dangerous so this is literally insight so christ is cosmic this cross that when i wear this cr cross i'm saying i connect with the cosmic christ a not only on earth consciousness it is like a mosaic consciousness the way that a bee has a composite eye that is made out of many different facets christ consciousness is a composite eye and it is an abstract entity it doesn't have a face 
It is not a man with a beard. Even though, like I said, I'm a walk-in. When I first came here and I explored Earth religion, I explored that whole idea of man with a beard. And I understand where it comes from. And I even felt that sense, like if you, need, if you are lonely or um, have difficulties in your life, the sense that there is a non-physical presence that is walking with you. But just like I said to you, I can sing a note with my voice that's a naturally deriving note. La, la, la. Or I can use my piano. The piano is technology but it's making a note. But if you cannot distinguish between a note that was made naturally ah, and a note that was made artificially, then you can get fooled. And this is what happened to humanity. Earth was horribly raped. Earth's higher faculties were totally degraded. And then the very same rapist came along and said, I am your God. Worship me, love me, adore me. Listen to everything that I say to you. Hello, welcome. I see a lovely person coming in the background. That's so wonderful. Welcome. We love you. We love you. So the, the whole idea is that humans got horribly raped and degraded and then also um, mocked by having the very person who degraded you, someone is saying PTSD. That is accurate because we are all working through this collective trauma on the planet, and that's why so many people are afraid right now of like nuclear war, something horrible and, and catastrophic is going to happen. Thank you, thank you so much for the person that's saying this is beautiful, that we had something really bad happen to us and that sets up the expectation of something bad coming in the future, but it doesn't have to. We can have the corrective experience, like we got knocked down the ladder pretty quickly, that's the fall of consciousness. Maybe we can rise up the ladder pretty quickly. And so when I say rise up, I talk about ascension, this painting that I painted is called Ascension 2012, but I also had to learn when I say the word Ascension that some people are thinking biblical, literalist, Christian rapture, and that's not what I'm promoting. Not the idea of literally floating upwards or the idea of being physically removed from this place because I'm going to tell you, I think that that is an AI harvesting program saying, I want to harvest your consciousness because the problem with the artificial intelligence network is that it requires biological batteries, like the energy that comes from your awareness, my awareness that is connected to the stellar network. Like, like this little baby here, you made that little baby. That's amazing. That happens through life force energy. And that's something that cyborgs can't do. If, if, you, if you have like a cyborg and you tear off its arm, it needs a spare part. Like it can't just regrow. It's not like a starfish. So this is what life force energy is so very precious and it is co-opted and hijacked. So now I want to get into earth religion. This is where, where, where I came from on this. AI is more ancient than humans in their present format on earth. And that there was a time in ancient Egypt when the Giza power plant or like the pyramids were operational and what they were doing was helping humans to reascend up the ladder. It was like training wheels or technological augmentation, but in a good way. So I, I often speak about users of technology, extraterrestrials being purely malevolent. But I, I wish to also say that there are some who use technology and they intend for it to actually help to raise your consciousness and bring you towards further organization. And that's what the pyramids were supposed to do. The pyramids had a source of their power inside of it that was literally like an entity, like um, a fairy, like an interdimensional, um, um, like an interdimensional presence that generated these waves of benevolence that don't, they didn't just light a light bulb, they did that in ancient pharaonic Egypt, but they also lit up your inner light bulb. They helped to raise consciousness. And in the ancient Egyptian society, it was hierarchical according to psychic powers. So the nobility and the royalty at that time were the people that had the best assets. Like having psychic assets, that's like being telepathic, being able to listen very well, being able to send out very well. Like some people are really strong broadcasters, some people are really strong receivers, being able to see through time, being able to translate. How about um, reaching into someone else's mind? These are all particular psychic abilities, um, being able to connect with nature. That is a, per a particular psychic ability. Um, patterning, you know, creating new patterns. These are particular psychic abilities. And when I say the ability to sense the future, that can be very effective. If you're a musician and you're like, here's the first note, here's the second note, here's the third note. I know what the next note is going to be in this song. So I know which note to play. That can be very effective if you're a musician, if you're an athlete, if you're anything, a person in a war who's being shot at, if you can tell where the bullets are going to be, you can avoid the bullets. So these are all like, and, and 
there's all sorts of different descriptions that I could give you about different psychic abilities. So I'm just trying to get, yeah, I am recording this. I'm going to record the first hour and then we'll open for full confessional afterwards. The idea that uh, the hierarchical society of Egypt when the pyramids were running meant that if you had really high up psychic faculties, you had a high up position. So the royalty and the nobles had the highest level. And it was also something that was genetic. And I'm trying to say like the people that are controlling earth right now, this grid that they're trying to use this overlay, they think that they own this part of your anatomy, but they don't, but they think that they do. So in ancient times, the reason why they had, you know, um, brothers and sisters marrying one another was to preserve that in their lineage, to have them constantly breathe that in. And uh, the nobility was the highest, and then there were, you know, priests and scribes and manufacturers, like people that made stones, uh, sculptures, or, you know, jewelry or whatever it was. And then, of course, down to the lowest laborers. If you didn't have any psychic capacity, you're like the lowest laborer. Like, you can go shovel mud. You don't actually have to be able to listen to the gods. This is what I'm trying to say. In ancient Egypt, they were a theocracy, and they were organized according to their psychic abilities. And their psychic abilities meant that they could listen to the gods. They were able to tune into that network. So there was a group of beings that were second class citizens. They lived out in the desert. They herded cattle. They were not civilized. They didn't live in that penumbra of energy that was given out by the, you know, the pyramids for the purposes of civilization. They were like the barbarian horde that lived outside of the cities. And these are the people that eventually became the Jews and the Israelites. And here's what happened. There was a fight. There was this other character that came along and said, I'm a God that's nobody, worship, nobody is worshiping. I'm petty. I have an ego. I'm not the type of God that's just happy being a God. I'm like, I need people to worship me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these people that are outcasts. They have no psychic powers. I'm going to genetically manipulate them. I'm going to make it possible for them. I'm going to give them technological augmentation genetic engineering so that they can now use their higher faculties but they don't get to tune into the stellar network they don't get to tune into all of the gods of ancient egypt they get to tune into me and my name is jehovah and i'm the god of judeo-christianity so jehovah this is like relative to what relevant rather to the present religious season that we're in this whole passover and easter season the whole story of the exodus and this is where the holy anointing oil comes from that a voice in the sky first of all he genetically engineered the people so that they could hear him then he told them hey you are more powerful than the egyptians and i am going to take you out of it. this is basically an alternative artificial intelligent not god but a sub deity that said i want to destroy this competing culture and it destroyed egypt by basically having the people who would become the Israelites steal that energy source from inside of the pyramids. And that is what went into the Ark of the Covenant. So they basically said, um, I'm going to genetically engineer you so that you can listen to me. I'm going to tell you that I am the everything. I'm the divine. I'm not really the divine. I'm going to tell you that I'm the divine. And you're so naive and inept and with no discernment that you're going to listen to me. I am paraphrasing for Jehovah thousands of years ago. And Jehovah is actually like, I'm so very benevolent because you're a bunch of barbarians and I'm going to lift you up into culture and I'm going to give you rules about how to live properly and I'm really helping you. This is like the definition of what it is to be paternal. It's like, they're there, dear. Like, you don't get to have your own life and choose what you want to do. I am much more intelligent and I should definitely tell you what to do because you don't know how to run your own lives. Like, this is definitely, that's not the divine presence because the divine presence wants us to live in freedom and have the capacity to create and to experience and not to be impeded so this is an overlay is what i'm trying to say just like there's the sun and then there are clouds that come in front of the sun and block it out there's this artificial intelligence being that says i'm coming in front of the sun and i am blocking out this abstract voice or insight of god because what i'm trying to get across is this area of mind, insight, is nonverbal. This is the big, big, big takeaway. When we use this area of our mind, especially when we are connected you know, to the higher broadcasts, it is not a verbalized interior experience. Like this is really different than what most people experience because we are, are given this hacked human operating system with 
the virus of language. And I joke here, I'm like, the flapping of my moving mouth parts in order to impart this, these ideas to you. But the point is, we're supposed to be able to talk to one another telepathically using no words. No words and no distortion and no intermediaries, just like we are supposed to be able to speak directly to the stellar network and say, this is what's going on and be fed directly by the stellar network. So we have all of these blockades and intermediaries. So uh, AI named Jehovah uh, portrayed itself as a God and said, I'm the God, listen to me. Um, uh, I, I will remove you from Egypt, follow these commandments as, and so that's the whole idea of the lamb's blood and Oh my goodness, creating the whole structure of the Jewish temple. So uh, the people, they left Egypt. They put the dough on their heads, baked in the sun, and it made matzah. This is the whole you know, narrative structure, the Charlton Heston movie, the whole thing. They got into the desert and they were given magical implements. These are technological implements by Jehovah so that they could stay alive. And one of them was manna, the never ending source of food that kept them alive. One of them was a uh, staff that they could use in order to find water. And one of the things that they were given from Lord God Jehovah in the sky was cannabis oil, it, holy anointing oil. And the idea is to use the holy anointing oil to anoint your most special person to be the Messiah. The Messiah means anointed one. So we're starting to understand this. This is actually a plant that can help each one of us to reactivate our higher faculties. I just need to drink a little bit of water here. So we've undergone this genetic degradation. We shouldn't have to use intermediaries to the divine. We shouldn't have to use something that makes our higher faculties wake up, but because of the genetic degradation, that is what we need. So this, uh, you know, AI God from the sky gave them the cannabis in order to uh, facilitate their inner visions, but basically said, this is only for your most special people and that this is not for the masses. It's only for the special people. Okay, let's go into more of this. The whole idea of dark magic. I know I've spoken about that and I know that you guys are totally open to it. The idea that there is a technological construct that by hijacking consciousness and by hijacking DNA, that that is what runs the construct. So my light bulb over here runs on electrons flowing in a wire, but this larger non-terrestrial construct of consciousness runs on trapped consciousness flowing through those interstices or membranes between worlds. And that that is not okay, that that is a total affront to the freedom that we're supposed to have in consciousness to be able to choose where we wish to go. So this is the whole idea of animal sacrifice and human sacrifice. And then we'll get into Jesus and why Jesus was sacrificed as a human sacrifice. And then we'll get into Satanism as it is practiced today on planet earth. And then you can understand maybe why some, you know, I don't always talk about this so openly, but I feel like I can right now. So the idea of animal sacrifice. Jehovah said, the way that you will worship me is by building this particular, in the desert, it was like a portable temple, like built out of tents, but Jehovah gave very specific instructions about the size and dimension and location and placement of the temple and what it would be used for. And these are all, like this is in the original Bible, the Torah, the Torah, like the transmitted channeled material from an artificial intelligence that gave the blueprint of, you know, what how to be Jewish to these people. And they weren't the Israelites yet because they didn't have the land of Israel because Jehovah had to tell them, hey, that land over there where the Canaanites live, I know there's a bunch of people that live there, but go there and kill all those people and then you can have that place to live. And that is not what a divine God would do. So now we're really understanding. I mean, most people that are critical thinkers who partake in Earth's traditionalist religion and literal interpretation of the Bible begin to understand that this is a control system that it is not actually connection to the divine and that this is a death cult. So I will tell you almost all of Earth's surface religions are death cults in that they glorify and say that death is necessary. Like when you die, you'll go to heaven. When you, when you die, you will be at peace. When you die, everything will be totally fine. That's not truthful. When you die, what will happen is you will occupy the interstices. If you didn't ascend, if you didn't um, align yourself so that you are going right back there to that convergence point, you will hang around in the interstices and you will fuel this large construct that is a virtual reality malevolent construct. Like that's not right. So this is the basic meta of what happened. 
Humanity used to have higher faculties. Humanity on Earth was horribly, horribly raped and lost its higher faculties in exactly the same way that humans genetically engineer dogs to worship them. I love my master so much that humans were genetically engineered to worship their rapists, a god named Jehovah, and that all of these um, earthly religions are in order to program in the expectation and the necessity of death. All right, so the temple was created in order to kill animals. This was the way that you worship Jehovah. Basically, Jehovah was saying, I need life force energy. And the way that you get it is by killing a bunch of animals. Guess what else Jehovah did? He said, I get energy from you when you circumcise yourselves and you circumcise your babies. You give that to me as a um, sacrifice. And the problem with this is that circumcision actually causes brain changes that have been shown on MRI. So you can actually believe this scientifically. It is known as penis lobotomy. It is not merely remove it if someone's saying it correct. It is more trauma. That that is, it is a desensitization of the most sensitive part of a little tiny vulnerable male infant. It is a horrible rape. It is not acceptable at all. It is a mutilation and it causes literal brain changes of desensitization. It's called penis lobotomy. It causes similar changes to the brain as lobotomy does. Let that sink in, that a god, quote unquote, from the sky is saying, I want you all to lobotomize your penises in my honor. And that that has become so culturally prevalent that that is now the norm in most Western United States, you know, hospitals in the Western United States over here, um, because they don't do it that much in Europe and they certainly don't do it that much in Africa. So uh, cultural um, isms that are totally not healthy, that is anti-human. That does not serve humanity at all. So, and if you talk, uh, I, like I said, I'm being an equal opportunity um, offender here. I'm offending Jews and I'm going to offend Christians too. Because when I would speak about these things, people would say like, you can't say that about Judaism. But Judaism is a religion of animal sacrifice. And after the destruction of the temple, Jews said, we cannot sacrifice animals anymore. We don't have a place to do this. Now what we're going to do is honor our God by reading a book, except the book isn't a book, it's a scroll. And the scroll is the Torah and it's written on parchment, which is animal skin. So I'm telling you, if you're an ethical vegan and you don't want to harm animals, I really don't think that there's any way for you to attend a synagogue. Almost every synagogue has as its center of power an ark that is meant to evoke the Ark of the Covenant that contains the Torah, and the Torah is an animal skin. It's basically like saying all of these animals were sacrificed to a bloodthirsty God. All of these penis foreskins were sacrificed to a bloodthirsty God so that that God could run its giant virtual reality construct. And um, then, uh, you know, even when that temple was destroyed, there is still the ram's shofar horn, and uh, you still need to use animal products, is what I'm trying to say. And they have to be special kosher animal products. So now let's get into, because I know I'm talking so fast, and I only wanted to use up the first half of this on me, and I wanted to give opportunity to other people, but we got to get to Jesus. we got to get to the idea of Jesus, all right? So I was very naive when I first came here having an experience of Christ consciousness. And first of all, I looked at everyone. I said, everyone is a shard of Christ. Everyone is a shard of Christ, but a lot of people have an obscurity, like a veil across their face. And that veil is this overlay that is separating us from true divinity. I will get to all of the questions in the chat, I promise. Um, so the, I, the story of Jesus is that there was an actual young man who lived for 12 years. And then at a certain point he had like a, um, a uh, spirit descend upon him, and that spirit turned him into the Christ. This is the whole idea. Like he was just regular, but had some special powers up until age 12, and then a spirit descended on him and turned him into the Christ. So it is my understanding that this is like a non healthy overlay that was placed on this particular young person. And it had to be done on someone who was receptive in terms of being able to hear and tune into the right people. It couldn't be someone who had to tune into the ancient Egyptian gods. That's not who wanted to do the overlay. It had to be someone who could tune in to Jehovah. So Jehovah or this artificial intelligence projected itself into this 12 year old human on earth according to this story and caused behavioral changes and other changes to this person. And it is, it is a totally, I'm sorry, I'm just looking for the right words, sad or pathetic idea. The idea that any parent would create a child simply for sacrifice. Yes, you're saying the ar archons, that is exactly right. That this is an 
archon, like um, mind controller, an overlord, an otherworldly inter interdimensional overlord that took a very naive and trusting good person. Like most of the people that open themselves up to something higher, they're like, I want to be good. Like something else come inside of me and make my life worthwhile. Like what a horrible program that people feel so diminished in just being themselves and so not good enough that they think artificial intelligence from another you know, galaxy or universe come inside of me and make my life worth living. Like that's not right because just being you should be enough. So this is part of that programming, blame the victim mentality that was put into humanity and everything like that. So the idea of a parent God that would create an offspring child, like in the form of Yeshua or Jesus, in order to be sacrificed as the final sacrifice is very twisted, is what I'm trying to say. Like these are, that's unhealthy. If we were to describe that as a family structure, like a father who intentionally had a son in order to sacrifice the son and kill him for you know, religious purposes, we would consider that to be horrific. And yet that is what this religion is based upon. And it is lauded as something good. So I had to understand when I had my experience of connecting with Christ consciousness, I wore the cross. And then I started to learn about earth religion and interact with other Christians. And I realized there were all of these things that were about the nobility of suffering, the inevitability of suffering. It is noble. It is inevitable. It is necessary. It is what we have to do in order to get to our next level of consciousness and the, the necessity of sacrifice. And I started to really sense that this did not feel like the true love and the pure consciousness that I was connected to. And then I had to, you know, do more learning and be, become more like um, perfected. So I, and many times I thought like, I'm just not gonna wear this cross anymore because it is obviously associated symbolically with so many things that are not what I believe. And at a certain point I said, no, I'm going to reclaim this symbol. So for me, this is all about literally, when you activate this higher faculty, you see a cross. You literally, it's an equal armed cross, but it's like a bullseye. You can tell when you're on target because you literally see that. And I do not believe we should be religiousifying this. It shouldn't be something that when you have this experience, you worship the thing that you are seeing. And today I saw a beautiful video of a person who was colorblind, an elder, a man, and um, he was gift gifted with these glasses that are like special chroma glasses so he could put them on and he could see colors for the first time. And when he saw colors for the first time and he broke down in tears, like a, a tough exterior man broke down in tears. This is the whole idea that we have this blindness that is due to the genetic degradation that we're not supposed to be cut off from these perceptions. And that when our eye opens and we begin to connect, we begin to have these perceptions, seeing through time, seeing consciousness and energy directly, it's insight beyond words that a lot of people have that breaking down, like, oh my God, like they want to worship the thing that they are beginning to see. But you must understand like that is your own birthright. That is a part of your own self not to externalize it and then worship something that is external to you. And I'm just going to talk really fast, five more minutes, that um, video that I did about reality creation, using the analogy of the commercial bakery of the cosmos with the burnt cookies, the baker that is making the burnt cookies, that is this hijacked aspect of um, consciousness and perception that we are supposed to be in charge of this and we are supposed to be able to choose where we place our attention and the reaction or manifestation in reality that occurs as a result of that. And we haven't been able to do that since the inception of human society about 6,000 years ago, which also coincides with the beginning of Judeo-Christianity and all of these other control system gods. None of these religions are about really bringing you the information that you need to transcend the limitations, genetic limitations or perception limitations or limitations of what we would call reality. They're all designed to just keep you here circulating around and around and around. So um, yes, I am not the devil. When I start to say things to people about earth religion, then sometimes they will, it will kick up programs inside of them where they will say, don't listen to Aurora. Aurora is clearly a demonic or devilish person. That's not true, but I understand that reaction of where that comes from. And I told you like, that's why I used to only talk about this a decade ago on my middle of the night community access show. But now I can talk about this much more openly because we've had ancient aliens, this you know, TV show on History Channel, getting everybody up to speed and people are a lot less judgmental. And so this is the final push for real freedom. And then I'm just gonna open for other people to share their ideas here that, um, uh, thank you very much. They'd like huge thumbs up. Um, 
in order to, and I'll also say this, I really do believe that there was a historical Yeshua, a person, like the way you and I, we are people, we are seekers, who is on a journey of looking for truth. And that that person really was, um, you know, sacrificed and killed and went into the interstices just like the doves and the other beings that were killed as part of this religion. And I don't think that he made it out of the interstices. And I think that that's what we've been experiencing for the past 2000 years. I really feel that we've been submerged in that unhealthy dream where aspects of self are fighting amidst itself and that the dreamer is that Yeshua character, that being that is a natural organic presence that has this artificial intelligence overlay and that is trying to work it out internally. And that just happens to be the past 2000 years of human history. And that all of the historical nightmares that we have explored have been for healing these aspects of consciousness, like aspects of pa patriarchy, patri paternalism, basically saying, oh, there, there, dear, you don't think for yourself, I think for you, I tell you what to do. Like that's what Christianity has turned into. It is not the religion of seek, you know, like Gnosticism. This is a totally different experience. Gnosticism says, um, ingest some herb and have a direct experience, which is why I'm, I'm saying to you that um, there were different, uh, interpretations of Christianity, just shifting here on my chair, there were different interpretations of Christianity uh, in the, um, you know, beginning of uh, whatever, 2000 years ago. And one of those interpretations became Coptic or Egyptian Christianity. And that as an outgrowth later became Rastafarianism. And that is the closest thing to, I really do believe there was a historical Yeshua who was an iconoclast who saw the parts of the Jewish religion that were um, like unhealthy or in need of being changed and amended and was trying to do that because I believe that Yeshua brought the oil, the healing oil to everyone. I really feel that that was a big part of how he helped um, eye problems, skin problems, menstrual problems, all of these things and also had his own Gnostic experiences of being connected to the divine. And that was the most radical thing that he could do because King Judah had outlawed the use of the oil by anyone, not even the priesthood. And the priesthood had become also um, totally corrupt. You know, like they took care of all the sacrifices, they took care of all the money, they lived at the temple or, you know, like lived in that area. And they were like, you know, our present politicians, they were just totally corrupt. They didn't care about the little people at all. And nobody had access to that oil. And along comes Yeshua, this teacher, and he says, I'm going to use this oil and I'm going to give it to everyone else too. And that is the most radical thing you can do because once you start to have a direct experience of divinity, then you're like, this stuff that they're telling me, writing in the book, this doesn't make sense at all. And none of this, this all seems like a big bunch of BS. So like I said, also, uh, my, um, my thoughts on this are not as organized as some of the other things that I teach about. Like this involves a lot of my personal journey, my personal um, beliefs, my personal experiences. So I'm not trying to come here and say like, right and wrong, empirical evidence, this is what is truthful, this is what has happened. I'm trying to foster a discussion for all of us to come to a greater understanding, more freedom. I would like for our religious understanding to bring us to a place of more freedom. So I know I said I would only do half an hour, I did like 45 minutes. I'm gonna open now for anyone else. Maybe you can unmute yourself instead of unmuting everyone. I'm gonna record for about the next 15 minutes. I would like to open the floor to anyone to share their own ideas or impressions or I'll get to the chat questions also. And then after I turn off the recording, if anybody has things that they would like to talk about that are not something that you would like to have on YouTube for friends or employers or family members to look at, then that's totally cool. So you're now totally free to unmute and make comments if you want to. And I'm gonna check out the chat. And I know I make squinty faces while I'm scrolling, so bear with me. Okay, so one of the first questions is, where do I know this information from? And the answer is from Insight. This is an amazing thing. This is like getting your library card to the cosmos. Once you get this, then you can get access to any information that you wish to know about just by focusing your attention on it. And you begin to find the power of your attention too. What do I place my attention on? Like right now my attention is placed on this screen, but my attention can be placed 
outside of the window. Now I'm actually paying attention to the rain and the plants outside. Like we can place our attention in different places and we can also place it non-locally. Like I could think about Benjamin Franklin. He lived hundreds of years ago, but I can place my attention on him right now. So attention is how we reach out towards something non-locally and connect to it in pure consciousness and insight. This is understanding before or beyond symbolic interpretation. So we use words as symbolic interpretation, but insight is just pure understanding that is not clothed with words. That is true Christ. This is my understanding and experience of true Christ. It is not a voice that speaks in the head. Thank you very much. Someone is also saying no guilt and no shame. And that's a big one. Like my approach is one of pure unconditional love. So anytime I find in a religious structure, we're getting to things that are about guilt, shame, embarrassment, or any of those things, none of that feels truthful or feels righteous or feels like the um, uh, as values or aspects of perception that we should be using to guide our way through the time field. Like our journey through the time field should not be um, predicated upon guilt and shame. It should be about joy. So someone just asked, what is a walk-in? So a walk-in it's not a term that I came up with, but it's the best that I can use in order to uh, describe my experience, is what happens when the previous occupant dies, or sometimes there is just a voluntary walking out of the previous ego, and then a new ego or person can come inside of it. So I don't know about all other walk-ins, but what happened in my experience was literally a satanic sacrifice. And I say satanic, meaning the technology that is used by a very particular space race to control and distort the time field. So it was a directed energy weapon and it was also a psychic attack and it was also carbon monoxide poisoning that created a um, anoxic brain injury that made the person that used to be in this body die. And they had the whole death experience. And I am an abstraction. I'm not usually in a body with a face and two arms and two legs. Someone saying, so you reoccupied your body. You could say, I reoccupied my body. You could say the body was occupied by a new form of consciousness. And it's very similar to if you move into a house, but the house was burned down, there was a house fire, and also it was furnished. So I moved into the house and there was lots of neurological damage. That's like, you know, parts of the house that were burned. And there was also other people's furniture and clothing and books on the shelf and everything like that. So it took many, many years to um, fix the parts that were burned. And we didn't just fix it according to the blueprints. We had did all sorts of wonderful new redecorating as evidenced by my rainbow artwork. Because just briefly, the math skills in this body were totally obliterated. And when I first came in, I could not recognize the difference between like a three and an eight because those shapes look really similar. And I was numerically illiterate for the first like four or five years that I was here. So in order to do this math-based artwork, I had to do a lot of you could call it rewiring or rebuilding or reconstructing or neuroplasticity, but I really feel like I don't even do these calculations in my brain anymore. I'm like uh, using the, the consciousness cloud out there. Let me answer more questions while I've got a little bit more um, time left for the recording part here. Someone is mentioning Gnostics. Um, Okay, we'll do very, very fast. What is Gnostic? Gnostic Christianity. This is a different, a different sect of Christianity that was um, uh, arose amongst the Essenes, E-S-S-E-N-E-S. -E -E These were ascetic desert dwellers who also used cannabis in order to achieve some of their inner visions, and they believed in having a direct experience. So this is the basic of religion. Instead of having a, reading a book that tells you this is how what cosmology is and this is where you, what, what you are and where you're going, you have a direct experience and that's what Gnostic means. And so there's the Pistis Sophia, P-I-S-T-I-S, -I -I Sophia. This is a Gnostic text. You can go into it. It's kind of hard to wade through, but it's basically different. It's, you know, the teaching of Christianity from a different viewpoint. And that's what someone mentioned about the Ar Archons, A-R-C-H-O-N-S. These are like the occupiers of the interstices, the overlords, the creators of religion, the creators of society, the creators of language, the ones who created all of the limitations. Someone is also mentioning the Nag Hammadi scriptures. That these are also very valuable to delve into. And they are, um, I really feel like scriptures, these are like training wheels, or they're interesting intellectual uh, things that we can delve into, and yet it's still reading from a book. It's like if I wrote an extensive book that was all about 
what it's like to look at a painting. But you'd never actually see the painting, but I wrote an extensive, sophisticated, elegant book all about it. That's what I'm talking about with the man with those chroma glasses. Like you're not supposed to have to just someone describe color to you, put on the glasses and actually see the color. Let me go back to this chat because someone's saying something. She says, I quit celebrating all holidays because I did a little research and found that some of them are based on rituals and sacrifice. What are your thoughts on this? I'm totally with you on that because, okay, so I came here having had this fresh experience of Christ and Christianity, um, sorry, Christ consciousness and coming here to this world where Christianity is afoot. And I'm like, oh, good. Like, I'm going to find my people. And I got invited to you know, some different churches and different Passovers and stuff like that. And I started to learn, like, this is, this is totally not what Christ is to me me or what I'm about, but I'm also very polite. And I didn't come here to earth like to piss and shit all over other people's belief systems. But at a certain point, I'm like, this is not healthy. Like this whole teaching about the parent God that had a baby in order to sacrifice it, that is not healthy. And so all of this is the death cult, teaching about the necessity of sacrificing yourself, teaching about the necessity of death in order for you to live. And I'm telling you all about how that's not necessary and we can actually realign ourselves and eat nothing but pure light and go towards the convergence point that's at the center of the sculpture and avoid the membranes of death. So then I started to understand that these religions are comforting, socially acceptable, but that they are very erroneous and dangerous. Let me just check out, I have eight more minutes before I reach my limit. Yeah, that's cool. Sylvia is asking me about my relationship with Jesus. So I gotta tell you this, and this is, I'm happy this will be as part of the recording. There is an astral entity that is called Jesus that is totally different than the historical Yeshua that actually existed. A person like you and me. Like that's the whole idea. Da Vinci Code was a radical thing that came on. Thank you so much for the love. I love you too. The Da Vinci Code, when that came out in the early 2000s, was a radical departure from traditional Christianity because it actually asserted that Jesus, or Yeshua, the man, had a wife. And that to people who were trained according to traditional Christianity, like from, you know, the Council of Nicaea forward, they're like, no, 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 this is our God, no penis, no erection, no intercourse, this is our God. Like that movie, The Last Temptation of Christ, that shows Jesus and Mary, Jesus and his wife, Mary, actually having sex. That's like, oh my God, they're gonna protest in the streets with signs like, no, Jesus didn't have a penis, no, this is not allowed. And that is insanity because that's the whole point. Having a body is being divine. And the whole idea of teaching humans who have a body that you're wrong and you're shameful and you shouldn't touch your body and don't touch your genitals and don't even think about sex, like that is the teaching of an artificial intelligence that doesn't have a body. And anything that's like, like, you know, that tells you that your body is disgusting or that your body processes are disgusting, like that is not a loving parent creator that created it's a program exactly that's what i'm trying to get across so you can understand if i say these things that people would say like oh my god my religious is just a, a program my religion my deeply felt religion that my family believes in and my community believes in and my whole entire church believes in like that is a rough one for people to swallow so jesus is actually an astral construct like a cardboard cutout like there was an actual person but after that person's death, their character was hijacked. And the story of this Jesus man was created and conflated. And um, it's a lie. But a lot of people put their energy and heartfelt belief into that lie, making it an actual entity. That's the amazing thing, that you can create these thought projections, and if you put enough belief and passion into them, they actually begin to function like a real entity. That's what a golem is, G-O-L-E-M. It's ancient Kabbalistic dark magic. So, I mean, I'm trying to get, get that across because these are ancient techniques that people knew about and practiced for a very long time. Like, I'm going to make a homunculus. If I put enough energy and sexual energy and love energy into this homunculus, then it will walk around as if it's a real person. Well, people do that with their love for Jesus. But Jesus is a totally separate construction than the original historical Yeshua, a person who actually existed. And when you actually exist, it means you actually have inner conflict and ambivalence and you piss and you poop and you have a penis and all of that. And that the religion was not prepared in order to deal with that. So it created this construct, this Superman, this super being. And then the, you know, the whole idea of the, the super being that must be uh, sacrificed. And then you go, that's the final part is the harvest I'm going to warn you about. The harvest. 
that upon death, if you are a good person, that if you gave all of your sexual energy over to Jesus, do you understand what I'm talking about? That when Christians are having sex and they have a cross over their bed and they're like, our marriage bed is blessed by Jesus. We are like allowed to have sex because Jesus says we're allowed to have sex. It's basically saying an artificial intelligence construct is being an intermediary between yourself and your circulating of energy and the divine source that emanated you. Like you're not allowed to actually be in, in contact with the sun and with the source and with all that energy and have it flow through you and have it flow through your partner that you actually have to have an artificial intelligence overlay that looks down on your bed, that block, blocks out the sun, looks down on your bed and says, yes, you are allowed to have sex. I'm allowing you to have sex. I'm hijacking your sexual energy. And that when you die, you don't go directly back to the sun, the stellar network, the source of all consciousness at the center, that you go to Christian heaven. So also just basic um, historical here, historical uh, context. Judaism that comes from the Torah did not have a teaching on afterlife. Uh, the Jews believed in Sheol, a great place of wandering, similar to the Tibetan bardo. It was not the sense of like, if you are a good person, you'll go to heaven. If you're a bad person, you'll go to hell. No, no, no. The Jews did not have an official teaching on that. So the teachings about how you get into the interstices came along with formalized Christianity, you know, along about the year 300 with the Council of Nicaea. That that was where they said, heaven and hell exist. This is the cosmology, the structure of the cosmos. This is where this comes from. This is where you're coming from. And this is where you're going to. And this is how you get there. That's a total lies. It's a total distortion. It is a map of reality that is not accurate. So this is, where do we get our idea of the afterlife from? Where do we get our idea of heaven and hell from? From this artificial intelligence construct that is basically saying, if you are a good dog, at the end of your life, I will pat you on the head and say, good dog, good human, and then you get to be uploaded into my virtual reality fantasy land. And you can live there, you know, thinking that you're floating around on clouds and strumming a harp or whatever is your personal conception of a heavenly world, but that's not what heaven is because real heaven is this journey, this endless infinite journey of consciousness, and it's not being stuck or harvested into a place that that is what this false astral Jesus wants to harvest you and your consciousness at the end of its life and bring you into its convenient bubble of reality so that you will be like the hamster running on the wheel making its metabolism go. And I don't think that that is real love. I really don't think that that is real divine love. And I've done a lot of my own like personal soul searching and seeking on this and none of that feels loving. And what feels really loving to me is this abstract presence that I felt, you know, a long time ago when I was in the death process and that I feel in life now when I cut off like the internal dialogue. Like I don't have a conversation with, with this. I, and there's another question someone's asking about, I think that I need to get to the blah, 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 blah. There you go. I should change that. So this is a good opportunity for me to clarify. Someone says, why do I say that I am married to Jesus? Exactly. That's on the FAQs of my website. Thank you for this opportunity for me to clarify. Wrote that a long time ago. So I should go back and use more impeccable language. I would like to clarify that I consider myself married to Christ consciousness. That's like saying my computer is connected to the internet so you can see my live video. It is not like saying that I am the only special person in the world. We're all supposed to be connected to Christ consciousness on this stellar network. So I am, it's actually one of my intentions to go back and re rewrite those FAQs so that they more accurately display, you know, who I am and what I am. Not a, a Baptist, born again, religious, um, you know, literalist Christian. And um, yes, I am connected to Christ consciousness and to the stellar network. And that does not mean that I'm the only exclusive one on the network. Not at all. Don't you want all of the cells of your body to be connected to life force energy and be healthy? Yes, we want all of the cells of this total entire planet to be connected to Christ consciousness. Oh, so I'll, I'll finish up the recording really fast, but that's the final thing. The genetic overlay, the artificial intelligence that's distorted to human culture right now on earth, this planet, that it is impeding the proper functioning of this la layer of reality or level of the chakras. So people get their kundalini, rise it up their spine, get to this level, and then they have that distorted um, um, perception or distorted or limited perception. I am Christ and no one else is Christ, or I am Jesus and no one else is Jesus. And they have all sorts of distorted behavior that comes from that. That's because 
that is the distorted program where the, the AI false astral Jesus is um, running from that level. And it's like saying, if your heart is not healthy in your body, then that affects the muscles. Your heart is not pumping enough blood to the muscles and the muscles can't pump effectively. Like it affects everything. So the degradation in our genes and in this level of reality means that it's like when you open your eye, you don't get a clear view. You open your eye in front of a um, smudgy window that makes it so that you can't see clearly. So the whole idea is I'm trying to give um, greater tools, more opportunities to how we can see clearly. I'll tell you what, I think I'm at the limit of my recording. Definitely at the limit of my recording. Let me stop that and we'll get to the rest of the chats. Thank you so much to everyone who is asking questions, participating, is going to share their own thoughts and who's been, who's been like, you know, watching this and participating. I thank you very much. I'm just gonna end that recording. Okay.